So we've done a lot in this application here. We're able to uh, add on click listener to our info window. Okay, so you click here and then you can get more information. Okay, let's go ahead and add a few other things, such as, as you can see right now, all of our markers are of the same color. Wouldn't it be fun to have random colors generated that will be attached to our markers? I think so too. So that's what we're going to be doing, right? Okay, so let's go ahead into our code. So I'm going to open my maps activity. This is where we're adding our markers to our maps. But we also know that it's in the marker options that we add the icon. Okay, here, as you can see here, we just have the hue orange. So what are we going to do? We're going to make it so that this color here is randomly selected from an array. The first thing I'm going to do to make things a little bit simpler is I'm going to create a bitmap descriptor colors. Okay, because if you look back here, bitmap descriptor factory is what it's needed to create the color. So at the top here level, we're going to create a new field and say private. I'm going to call this bitmap descriptor and it's going to be an array. So I'm going to call this icon colors, just like that. And right about here, inside of our own create, I am going to instantiate create the actual array. So icons is equal to new bitmap descriptor. We need to pass in a bitmap descriptor type. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say bitmap descriptor factory, okay, dot default marker. I'm going to pass bitmap descriptor, and there we go. I'm going to change this one. Well, we can keep that to orange. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for other ones. So I'm going to just go ahead and sort of to save us typing, I'm going to just copy all that we have and paste them here. Okay, perfect. So what we did here again, we are creating an array of type bitmap descriptor, which is needed. And I'm adding all of the different colors. Now, the reason why I comment this red out here is because um, we will use the red for certain circumstances. Okay, perfect. So now that we have our icon colors set up here, uh, what we need to do next is create a random generator method. So we're going to go to our util here. In fact, let's go inside of our constants. And we're going to say this create a random generator method. Okay, so I'm going to say public static call this random int. I'm going to pass range here. So I'm going to int min and int max. Two integers. So those will be the range in which we want to generate the numbers. Okay. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to say return. I'm going to create a new random object. Okay. And inside, and then I'm going to say dot next, I'm going to pass max minus min and just plus min. We'll see that in, in action. So essentially, we're going to pass, you know, the first one is going to be max, let's say the length in this case will be the length of our array. Okay, and minus the minimum, we're just going to put zero because we want it to be from the numbers to be from zero to the length of the array. And then we're just going to say plus main, which is going to be zero in this case. So we're just saying we need to include the minimum. So it's going to be something like from from zero to say to the length of the array. So if the array is 10 so from zero to 10, and we are including that um, zero as well. Okay, so zero is inclusive. Perfect. So now that we have our random int, we are going back to our maps, where we create all the earthquake and add it to the map. So we don't need all of this code anymore, because we are going to just pass in our icon array. So we're going to say icon colors. Okay, it's an array, and we're going to pass in our random int. So we're going to say random constants dot random int, we are going to pass the length of our array. So we're going to say icon colors dot length minus we're just going to add zero, actually. And we're going to pass zero like that. Perfect. Okay, again, if you go back to our constants, we're passing to min and max. All right, 
So what this does is it returns a random number each time this runs. So each time when we get to our each time this for loop goes, first time is going to create a new random number. So if it's zero random number, that means we're going back to our array of colors. I'm going to get this first one here. This whole piece of code will be inserted in place here, which will just get that color. Okay. So now if we save this and give a run, we should see a difference in color. Nope, something is not right. That's the problem. Let's say random int must be n must be positive. Okay, so let's do this. Let's say max min like that. I think that will change and that would work best. And there we go. Now you can see we have all different colors showing here. Okay, it's pretty nice. All the other functionality is still working as expected. But nevertheless, we've added a little bit of color. Good, good, good. Now the next thing we're going to do is to add a circle around each marker that has magnitude greater than let's say 2.0 or so. Okay, that way, um, there is a difference, we can differentiate the um, most serious quakes than the less serious ones. Okay, and once we do that, we're also going to change that color to red of the marker. That way, uh, users are able to see that there's a difference. So the red ones will signify that that earthquake was a little bit more serious than the others. All right, so what we're we going to do here now, going back to our maps, I'm going to get rid of all of these, because I don't think we'll be e using them at this point. Right here, we're going to add, I have mag greater than x. Okay, we can change that. So we're going to say if earthquake that get magnitude, in this case for testing purposes, we're going to say is greater or equal to 2.0. The bigger this number, the worse is the earthquake. So if it's 4 or 5, that means it's really bad. The earthquake was very, very damaging. Okay, so now here what we're going to do, we're going to create a circle options for our marker. So we're going to say circle. So it's actual, it's an actual class that we can create for our maps. So that so we're going to create circle, circle options, is equal to new circle options, just like that. And we're going to start adding things to our circle. Okay. We're going to say center. We need to pass a center. So in this case, it's going to be new, lat, long. And we need to pass earth that get lat and earth that get long. And then we're going to say circle that radius. Let's give a really big radius above 30,000. Circle options dot stroke width, say 3.5. Six floats. Give a fill color of red. So we're gonna instantiate. We're gonna go ahead and get the color class. Say dot. I want to make it red. While we're here, we're gonna change that marker to a different color. Okay. So we're gonna say that icon. We're gonna say bit that default, and we're gonna just go ahead and create ourselves. This is going to be red. There we go. Okay. And we need to add this to the map. So map dot add circle, we pass our circle options. Save this and give a run, we should see a difference. If of course that condition is met. Oh, there we have one red here. That's two that three. So let's And it's not showing our circle for some reason. Let's see what else could we um, let's go ahead here just to be consistent. Say earthquake dot set long set lat to properties that get and we're just going to go ahead and pass our longitude. Or in this case, latitude. OK, and let's say earthquake dot set longitude too long just like that just to be 
consistent here. And inside of our marker set position, we're going to do that. Let's save and see if that's going to give us still give us at least markers. Okay, so there we go. Perfect. So now it seems like you can, you can see the moment we do that, we're able to see our markers turning red, of course, and also we have now the circle, which signifies that we have an earthquake that it's greater than 2.0 magnitude. That's good. So now it's working. Just a little changes here and there just to make sure things are okay. Okay. Um, in next video, we'll continue working on this application, adding a few more things, and then we will call it good. I hope that at this point, we're able to see the power behind uh, using APIs on the internet to fetch data and add markers to our maps and changing the way our maps markers look and so forth. So there's a lot of possibilities here, and this is just the surface that I'm touching here. Okay. And I want you to also keep in mind that as we work on this application or any other application that we've been working on, I want you to start thinking of things that you can add to that application or um, getting the knowledge that you're learning to start thinking of applications that you would want to build yourself. Okay. And that's a very good uh, way of positioning yourself as an Android developer. Okay. So I'll see you in the next video.